Chapter 8, Gangster School, 1998. The boys of Preston dreaded the days when Mondo was in charge because he was a fucking drill sergeant. Pushing the toughest of them to the point of passing out while he smiled and pulled off a few more burpees and push-ups. Shit sounded like me. He'd wake up at sunrise, do a few stretches to limber up and roll up his mattress. Then he'd call out to the other boys in his dorm and order them through the machina, the machine, grunting and sweating during the hour-long workout the Northanios had perfected for keeping their soldiers in fighting shape. His already trim body showed the results. His shoulders and back were no longer narrow like a child's. Now they fanned into a V, broad and muscle, and he believed there wasn't a drop of fat on any part of him. His weight shot up to 194 pounds of pure lean body mass. He wondered what Alyssa would think of his physique. Of all the girls who wrote and visited, she intrigued him the most. When he heard her voice on the phone, it was the birth of a smile that lasted a day. He told friends she was the kind of girl a guy would go to church for. Damn, he'd think, the kind you go straight for. Not that he, did, he hadn't enjoyed getting other girls to fall in love with him, he believed himself a master of that art. Snagging a girlfriend or three while you were locked up was a skill much admired among the wards. And more than one female had cried over his affections. And yet, after that initial triumph and envious glances from homies on visiting days, he almost grew bored with the pursuit. Only the thought of Alyssa made him forget whatever he was about to do. For the first time, he considered the idea of being faithful, but she was out of his reach. She loved being with him when he was on the streets, told him she craved his warmth and attention, and yet he knew she would never live the gangster life. She always said she was going to leave Salinas and go be somebody, but nah. He could convince her to be his. Just had to put out that charm that made girls sob into pillows all over town. Drenched in sweat after his workout, he'd shower or give himself a quick bird bath in the dorm still sink, dress, and walk to the dining hall. The repeating rhythm of his days became the foundation of the warrior's discipline he relished. He'd return to his bunk to write an essay on the cause or to summarize the books his channel had assigned him to read. Machiavelli, the prince, Sun Tzu's The Art of War. Often, he'd reach for a dictionary kept in his locker because if he misspelled something, his superior said he'd have to write the correct word 100 times. He might also take this time to sneak a hit of Mota or write a quick note to Alyssa before lunch. No letter came back, it figured. He had to wonder if she was just too good. The kind of girls who went for him, well, they slept around a lot, did drugs, and yeah, he had to face it. They were party girls. Not that he minded any of that, but Alyssa, she was the fruit of the top of the tree, golden in the sun and just out of reach. For the first time they hooked up, he was 14 and on a day pass from a boy's ranch. He was out looking for his brother, Chinito. When Mondo ran into Chachi's older sister on the street, she said Chinito was at her apartment along with Chachi and the whole crew. She also smiled and said Alyssa was there. Alyssa had been his childhood friend since the days they all went to the lake at a royal Seco, and they'd splash and laugh in that little kid flirting way, hoping no one noticed. When he knocked on the apartment door, everyone thought it would be funny to wake Alyssa and tell her the knock was for her. Half asleep, she got up and opened the door. She was glad to see Mondo, but embarrassed that he saw her rumpled right out of bed. He didn't care, she was beautiful no matter what. After a few short greetings and catching up with the fellas, he joined Alyssa in her room. It was her first time, and though he was more experienced, afterward he felt lucky to be lying next to the prettiest girl in the world. He declared he was not going back to the boys ranch. But later, in the light of morning, he was stopped by a cop and whisked back to Juvie. He felt sorry for the cop while he grinned the whole way back to the jail. Whatever they once had was sweet, very sweet, but he was kidding himself. She was the kind of girl who'd marry a college boy, a guy who'd become a banker or a doctor and take her out of Salinas into a better world. He tried to push her out of his thoughts. Mondo's schooling raced along and soon an experienced teacher, an older North Daniel, who'd been to state prison and came back to the YA to finish his sentence, took him under his wing 
Mondo already knew far more than others his age. He was able to recite the story of the birth of the Nuestra Familia and soon he could write it from memory. In the 1950s, several guys out of East Los Angeles were doing some hard time together. They decided to form a prison gang, which is known as La M or the Mexican Mafia, formed to protect the Mexican race from other inmates as well as the prison staff. Their reason for forming a prison gang were quickly forgotten. La M started abusing, disrespecting, raping, and stealing from other inmates, including their own Mexican race. Their main targets and victims became the Mexicans from small towns, or as the M.A. called it, farmers from the farm towns. These farmers formed what is called La Nuestra Familia. Though Mondo didn't hang out with any farm workers, in fact, the campesinos were usually his robbery victims. His raza, proud famero past lived on, even in the put down the Sureños used for Norteños. They called them busters which was short for side busters, or as some would say, because they busted away from La M. Returning the insult, the Norteños referred to the Sureño as scraps, scrapas, and surats. His teacher taught him that the first battle between the NF and La M started in 1967, and in the span of a year, it boiled into all-out war. There were different versions of the incident that sparked the Great Shoe War. Some said it happened in San Quentin, others said Soledad. But the deal was a guy from La M stole a pair of shoes from a guy from up north. Either way, history maintains that the germ of the NF sprouted the day that dude's shoes were nabbed. A riot broke out that lasted several days until September 16, 1968, which became the official birthday of the NF, or the anniversary, you mean. A date that conveniently happened to be Mexico's Independence Day. And so the cause was born. Mondo broke it down this way. C is referred to canalismo or conduct. A is for awareness. U for unity. S for security. And E, well, that could be education or equality. The cause meant fighting for respect and equal justice because guys from the north were getting raped, extorted, and abused. La M figured the Norteños were all from sleepy little towns, that they had no guts or backup. The veterans from LA had way more manpower but Mondo was taught that the Norteños responded boldly. We'd rather die fighting La M on our feet than live as punks or cowards on our knees. The NF spread through the prisons, its members killed by the dozens in the ensuing war. At that time, the gang still allowed peace talks with their enemies, so some NF guys in Chino played it like they wanted to get together to talk. La M didn't know what was coming, and the Northerners grabbed La M leader Cheyenne Cadena as he left his cell around 1 p.m. They stabbed him more than 50 times and took his watch as a trophy. Another man, a La M bodyguard, rushed to Cheyenne's aid and the northerners stabbed him too. Both victims were thrown from the prison's second story tier. The bodyguard survived with brain damage. Cadena did not. Since that day, since that winter day in 1972, all talk of peace or truces was forbidden between the two gangs. Mondo learned that while the Norteños war was going on in the prisons, all that Cesar Chavez stuff was going on in the fields. The northern inmates adopted Chavez's symbol, the Aztec style Welga bird or the Welga eagle because Chavez was taking a stand, the same way the NF took a stand against La M. Chavez's beliefs were pretty much the same, Mondo decided. If you looked at the history, Chavez wanted equality. He wanted respect. It was just a different situation. Still, Mondo had trouble at times figuring out why the older Norteños around him looked up to Chavez so much. That struggle was for different reasons, and it was sort of funny that Chavez was standing up for the same FISA farm workers. Mondo and his homeboys used to rob. Of course, the homeboys paid no attention at all to Chavez's deep-rooted gospel of nonviolence. But for Mondo, it all clicked when he studied the colors in the UFW's flag, the same colors in the bandana that in the streets had always hung from his back pocket. He wrote about that too. We use the red rags, which are black, white, and red. The black is for hard times. It ain't always going to be easy. The white is for the good times, setting things up for those who will follow. And the red is for the bloodshed and the lives that will be lost through sacrifices made. Those concepts applied to the Nortaniel struggle, he thought. 
Chavez was doing something he believed in, and so are we. History, he knew, was not simple, and at times, his raza story was conflicted. There were leaders in the NF who came from down south. One of the familia's current generals, Pinky Hernandez, was from Rancho Cucamonga. The war wasn't really about north and south. Inmates from rural areas in Southern California, from San Gabriel Valley, San Bernardino, had been abused by La M as well. And that Preston, Mondo met Sureños, who were more like him than he wanted to admit. In Salinas, the Sureños had always been foreign, Spanish-speaking soccer playing paisas, and it was easy to see them as outside invaders. But here in YA, most of them were from urban Los Angeles, with shaved down heads and baggy jeans. They liked similar music and came from similar backgrounds. It bothered him to see that they were smart young American citizens just like him. <laughs> 